Hey guys, what's up? So, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the difference between good lighting and bad lighting, and how you can identify it and fix it in your own works. So, let's get started. Why is there a difference between this one and this one? How can you tell that the one on the right is bad? I kept everything the same, except for three key things. Contrast, color, and control. Contrast can be defined as the difference in luminance or color that makes an object distinguishable. Color, in this case, is how the colors from the piece interact with each other. And control, using these principles as well as others in moderation. So with those key things in mind, let's identify what went wrong here. Alright, so first, let's talk about the first principle, contrast. So, as you can see here, in the lighting sense, we can think of contrast as how different the bright areas are from the dark areas, aka using rims. Rims are a type of lighting wherein you add a light to the edge of a character so that it stands out from its environment. As you can see, these rims do exist right here on his fingers, down his back, on the side of his leg. However, they're not punctual, they're not strong enough. So a good way to, to make your rims better is to increase the brightness of them. You could also arrange them in a manner that is makes it more contrasting to the character itself and the lighting as a whole, especially when you have a dark setting like the one that's in the more correct version. Or you could readjust the angle at which the rim lights are pointing. Usually what I do is I'll utilize point lights, which are a kind of light that emits lighting in all directions. And they're really good for creating rim lights because it doesn't matter what direction it's facing because it's emitting light in all directions. So the only thing that should be taken care of is the correct placement of it. So keep that in mind. The second principle is color. We have two main colors here, white, maybe gray and red. This is a bit of an issue because when you have this monotonous looking color lighting right here, it makes the whole thing look flat. And what people are referring to when they say things look flat is that there's no shade, there's no shadows, and there's no contrast between the lighting and the shadows. The only reason it doesn't look terrible is because Genji by himself is reflective. He's a samurai robot. <laughs> So obviously he's got metal stuff on him, which calls for being reflective. However, if the reflective aspect was not there, it would look very bad and very flat. So make sure your lighting is not flat, aka make sure there's a distinguishable shadows and lighting area on your render. Finally, the third principle, control. So as I said before, you have to use all of these plus a little more in moderation. And what I mean in a little more is I'm talking about the number of lights that you use matters, the brightness of the lights matters, and using bloom and other effects also matters. You have to take all of those and use them in moderation because as you can see, too much bloom can make a piece look terrible, as is the case here. The number of lights and the brightness of them has a very profound effect. As you can see here, there's lighting coming from- there's lights coming from there, there's lights coming from here and here, as well as like right there for the rims. Then you have more coming right there, and as well as right here, and right here, and from directly at the camera, as I can show you. So as you can see, we have a lot of lights, and it's really cluttering up the scene. You can fix this by just deleting them. It's very simple, and... I would recommend that you do at least one cleansing of your lights if you think your scene looks flat. So, let's fix it. Firstly, let's address the number of lights that we have. This is very excessive in the amount of lights, so we can tone it down by going to the scene collection tab and seeing how many lights we have. This is a lot, so let's clean it up. All right, so now that we have less lights, we can go on to the other part, which is making it look good. Let's address the color attribute first. So if we go into our shading tab, we can see that we have three main colors, black, red, 
and white. Let's emphasize that more. As you can see, now we have our colors organized. We have red on this side, white on this side, and black all over. Next, let's focus more on the three-point lighting technique that I use so often. We have to identify key light. Our key light is clearly from here, so let's emphasize it more. Now that our key light has been more emphasized, we can work on perfecting the black areas to make them pop more. Now we have our black area identified, and as you can see, our shadows are really strong now, and it's starting to set a mood for the piece more easily. Next, let's work on control. So. We've already taken care of the number of lights and the brightness, so how about the effects? The only composition nodes I used were a glare node for the bloom and the color correction. This, all this was a sorry attempt at trying to get bloom on a transparent area, which did not work, unfortunately. I didn't modify this very much, all I did was just bring out the highlights and the shadows to make the contrast more apparent. Also, in fact, up the contrast a bit, and that was it. I'd like to use this note a lot, especially with bright areas, because it softens them a bit. I would recommend putting it on at a threshold of 0.6. The quality and the size does not matter that much. So, let's render. Alright, so after this first rendering, I already see a number of issues, which we can address when we move to Photoshop. Alright, so firstly, we need to bring out this rim more. It's consistent, it's consistent, and then it just stops. It kind of blurs out right there, which is what we want to avoid, and also right here as well. As well as right here, we need to make that part stronger, we need to emphasize the fingers more to emphasize the motion. Maybe bring this one out a little bit more. I already talked about that area, but I don't like how it uh, it's almost sizzling out, but not quite. It's kind of in that in-between area. Besides that, though, I do like how this key lighting is very discernible. However, I think we need to shift it back a little that way uh, because it's showing too much on his legs right here, and it's kind of breaking the shadow that we have being cast over him. I do like this, uh, his head though, like right there, that looks really cool, and it, again, emphasizes the contrast area of the three tips I was talking about. Should also emphasize this rim a bit more because, again, it's kind of just sizzling out, which is not what we want, we want to stand out like this. So, back to the drawing board, I suppose. Alright, I'd say that looks pretty much good. I've finally identified all these recurring issues. So, let's render. Alright, so now that we've addressed some of the most glaring issues, let's fix, try and see what we could do to better improve this for next time. So, uh, it seems I didn't completely resolve this issue. I only made that brighter, so there's there's one of note. I do like how his elbow and how it leads you up to his sword is more identifiable because of these rims, and also his fingers. 
I do wish there was some way I could make this part brighter without having to do any kind of editing in Photoshop, but it seems that wasn't really possible. So perhaps another thing to look for for next time is a better fix for that. Um, but overall, I think this is a great looking piece, despite the minor occurrences. These are good things to keep in mind when you're working on your own pieces.